What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an extension that allows you to animate the movement of textures inside of SketchUp. So big thank you to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. If you wanna support the show and vote on the extension that I cover on the channel every week, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this extension is called Animate X. You can find it in the Sketchication plugin store. And uh, this is a free extension that you can download. And I actually thought this was a newer extension, but um, going back and looking at it today, it looks like it's been out for a long time. So um, I'm actually a little surprised that I hadn't heard of it, but it's a pretty cool extension. So go ahead and download that, and then you're gonna install it the same way you would any other extension. And so when you install this extension and you enable it, you're gonna get a little uh, menu bar that looks like this. You can just click on this in order to pop up the Animate X um, animation editing menu. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to edit the movement of textures on faces inside of SketchUp. And the way that it does that is it takes objects on one of three layers that it'll create and then it'll animate them with a movement along the X, Y, and Z axes. So there's some other functions down here we'll talk about in a minute. But let's say, for example, that we had this simple cube and we wanted to place, let's go into our landscaping and maybe use this wood fence material. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to select a couple of these faces and then we're gonna double click on this layers icon right here. And so notice how when we double clicked on this layers icon, what it did is it created a tag so it says layers, but this is also going to be tags um, because this is older, the naming never got changed. Basically what it does is it creates a tag called animateX underscore one, and it places these textures on that tag. Well now, notice how we're getting movement in here of this texture. And it's moving along the X axis because the value here has been set to one. So if we wanted this to stop, you double click on the button for stop right here. It's kind of odd, these don't seem to work unless you double click on them. But, um, so I'm gonna double click on this to start, double click on this to stop. So now let's take a look at the way things move inside of this extension. So if I double click here to start this, right now, notice how this is being animated while this is not being animated. So the reason for that is because as far as this extension is concerned, this, texture is fixed on the X axis, right? There's no movement this way. Um, so what we wanna do if we wanted that to move as well is we would set something on the Y axis. So if I set a value of one, notice how now these are both going to move. So we're getting a sideways movement here and then a sideways movement here. And notice that the values you put in here are going to affect the speed at which this moves. So if I type in a value of two in the X, notice how it's moving twice as fast as the Y. And so in addition, you could also apply a Z, which would make these kind of move diagonally, just like this. So when these move diagonally, you get kind of an upward movement as well as a sideways movement. So if you wanted them to stop, you would just go right here. And so you can use this to animate a number of different things. So let's say, for example, that I had um, some kind of a scene with water in it. And let's say I had applied a water texture. Well, what we wanna do so let's go ahead and animate this with the second function. So I'm just gonna go down here to my layers. Remember that I wanna double click in order to create that layer. And then we're just gonna add a speed to this. So in this case, I'm gonna add a speed of one. Actually, I'm gonna double click the play button first, but then I'm gonna add a speed of one in the X value. Well, notice how the speed of one in the X value gets us moving the wrong direction. What you would really wanna do is you would wanna add a Y value. So value of one or two, really whatever you want. But notice how you can use this in order to animate the movement of the texture here as if water was actually moving along here. All right, so there is also an option in here for fix scenes. And so what the developer said in the video that he made is he said that there was an issue previously where these um, the textures weren't animating um, properly when you switched between scenes. To me, it looks like these are working, but it is a little bit clunky. So I did notice if you check the box for fix on your scenes and then you animate the transition, this is a much smoother 
transition. So I'm not 100% sure on exactly what this is doing other than it's making your animation transitions look a little bit better. So I would say if you are animating any kind of camera movement or anything like that, make sure that you check the box for fix scenes when you're doing that so that your animation looks a little bit better. You can also adjust the number of frames per second. Notice that a higher frames per second is gonna be harder on your computer than a lower frames per second. I will note, I have not tested this on anything that has more high resolution images. I would imagine it's probably a bad idea. Um, I would imagine it probably negatively affects your performance. So just be careful with the texture resolutions that you're uh, creating in here. So we're gonna go ahead and stop that animation for a second. And so an interesting application of this is you could use this with some kind of a clear image. So in this case, I've just downloaded a free transparent image that has some raindrops in here. Theoretically, you'd probably want your raindrops to be more like white or uh, either like dark spots or something like that. These are more like animated. But um, for what we're doing right here, it's gonna work just fine. So what you could do is you could get a transparent image like this that has transparency, and then let's go ahead and select it. And we'll just double click. We'll just double click so that it takes this texture and puts it on the Animate X3 tag. But let's say for example that you wanted to create a scene kind of like this one where rain is falling down. So maybe what I would do is I would take this, make it smaller. So maybe like five feet. But then you can animate this with a value of like negative one. So start off by double clicking on play and then you could type in a value of negative one. And so you could use this in order to animate rain or snow or something like that with a transparent image. So there's a lot of interesting applications for this if you get a little bit creative. So one odd thing is I have not been able to get this to export with the textures moving to an exported animation. So if you did want to take this animation and export it, you would probably have to use some kind of screen recorder unless there's something I'm missing, which if there is something I'm missing, let me know in the comments down below. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for voting on this extension and for supporting the show. If you want to do that you can check out the link in the notes down below but as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this i really appreciate it and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys